Loktarg, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was max effort upper day. Quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please click like down below. Help me keep those likes higher than the dislikes. Uh, people chimed in, they're like, man, okay, your bench is coming back. Your press and your overhead and incline are so weak. What's going to happen when those come up? Well, when those come up, I'm going to be benching 375, 385, 390, whatever. That's what's going to happen. So we keep working those things. Uh, but again, Buffalo Bar is technically harder, but not for me. This is the difference. I am really, really, really fast off the chest with close grip. Okay? I don't miss the bottom. I grind lockouts and miss them, or miss in the middle if my delts are too weak. Okay, I don't miss off the bottom. So for me, it's not actually any more difficult. So a lot of times people would say, oh, if you can do that with a buffalo bar, I bet you're even stronger. Well, for most lifters, yes, that's true. Not for me. Like, I'm actually not weaker on the buffalo. So I, I'm probably not stronger, at least significantly, with the straight bar. Okay, fair enough. And we'll see next time I test it coming up. But, you know, we're going to get that 365 this year I've had I've reassessed the goal and said look the 375 after that injury is probably not in the cards let's keep it reasonable keep it reasonable I got two months left this year let's get 365 and I think I'm gonna have to get it on a close grip and that's okay I'm gonna get it and this one went pretty good maybe I could have made another jump I didn't want to risk it I've been on a really good streak of hitting these lately with the little small jumps. I've been on a really good streak. I want to maintain that. Uh, I really want to maintain that moving forward. So we're going to push them to, you know, again, pretty hard. But I'm going to try not to miss. Keep them as training maxes. Okay, calm, collect, controlled. All right. We pause, drive up, keeping the butt on the bench, follow through. It was good. Could I have done five more pounds? Probably. Now, am I going to say, oh, uh, uh, easy? No. Probably. Ten more? Maybe. Just the last PR that I had actually hit before the injury. Maybe. My overhead pressing and stuff is weaker, though. So, if anything, my triceps are stronger. My triceps are stronger than they were then, actually. Then we went to the overhead press. And, guys, I I'm going to have to remind you again. I'm not interested in your criticism unless you really make a lot of sense. Someone comes in talking smack, they're like zero, zero, and it was a regular poster. It was post regular. I just banned him. I don't have time for it. I don't need it. I don't need the nonsense. This is not what this channel is for. You guys know that is my lockout with a closer grip, and it's not my elbows, because if I go wide grip, I can lock my elbows with a snatch grip overhead press. I've shown it. Closer grip, which is, again, the longest range of motion, plenty of muscles involved, I get power out of the bottom. That's where my shoulders have an issue. That's why on the chin-ups and stuff, it's number one why I got injured doing ring pull-ups, going to that dead hang. Trying to get everything to lock out, knowing that my shoulder structure does not allow for it. Um, I have spent a very, 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 very long time working on mobility to improve it. Guess what? Mobility training doesn't actually work. It's a con. I keep doing it in the slim hopes that it will one day work. I do a ton of mobility stuff on my shoulders. I've been doing way and way more rear delt work and everything for a long time now. Okay? Doesn't work. Doesn't help at all. And I got an impingement in my shoulder. That's what it was. My shoulder had an impingement that I have rehabbed myself. I did all the rehabilitation myself. I got an impingement from trying to go into a dead hang on the pull-ups. Okay. I just cannot do it. My, my body won't do it. And I've demonstrated before with the empty bar that it's my lockout. It doesn't matter. And I'm not competing in it. And actually, the only sport that has an actual competitive standard for it has in their bylaws that if you display to the judges that you, you have a limited lockout due to structure and prove to them ahead of time, they will accept it. And I'd be able to prove that. So it, it's fine. I'm not, I don't care. So now that that is out of the way for the, for the clowns, let's get back over to the training. 292 with this bar for 3x3. Three three. Now these were hard because I tried to make them really strict, stay tight, you know, pauses. And after doing the other 
uh, heavy work. These were actually hard. It was hard to get all three sets of three. They were challenging. Their drop was really was challenging each time. We were right where we need to be in those workloads. And overall, today's training volume I brought down a bit. And some people need to grasp when we talk about training volume, we mean hard sets, we mean quality reps. Like five by 10, like if you did five sets of 10 at say 60% of your one rep max, that would be almost no volume. Doesn't matter that you did 50 reps, you did 50 reps of junk. Okay, you guys understand? Because you could probably do 14 or 15 reps with that. You didn't even get a work set in. Quit counting that as a set. That was a bunch of warm-ups. Okay? We start counting sets. I'm doing a lot of sets. And if we count the whole ramp-up each time as a set, because it has multiple reps hitting upper threshold fibers with each weight jump, even if we take those out. So today I did three sets of the close grip. I did two sets of the weighted dips, two sets of incline, one set to failure. So a straight AM rep on the overhead. What did we end up with? What did we end up with? Eight sets of supplemental lifts after hitting two maxes. Eight challenging hard sets. That's what we ended up with. That's a lot. Twice a week, if you do that twice a week, that's 16 sets of pressing. Four different angles. Now, the reason I did some of them this way, and you guys notice the first rep always on my dip. This is why I don't max on dips. I can't go down. It's just I, I struggle to get in my groove. I almost don't even like to count the first rep. So the first set, I did my three. The next set, I'm like, well, let me take it all the way out, get as many reps as I can. And I ended up getting five, but only, you know, I counted it as three plus. Because I did four of them after kind of that, that half rep, first rep. And that always happens to me on dips. And if I try to sometimes go too low, I end up swinging forward and falling. It's just I can't quite get my groove, and then I have my groove, and then I can a lot of times I can get in and power through the other reps. The first rep is the hardest rep for me on a dip. It's way harder than the third or the fourth rep was. The only one even close was the fifth rep. So, again, this is 110 pounds, and considering you know I'm walking around 220 plus, especially by the time I'm eating. I'm easily 2.30 by the time I'm eating all my food and I'm ready to train and I've knocked all that food and, and liquid and everything in to train because I carb up and flew it up heavy. You know, so again, pretty, pretty good amount of weight for that. We'll get that up. I want to get those up to 135 for triples, for work sets, right? We'll get there slowly but surely. And that'll increase my bench because, again, it's my main one of my main tricep exercises, tricep lower chest. And the thing is, people say, well, why would we do two sets of this and two sets of this? Well, because they're all effective reps and we're hitting a variety of angles. And I need all these angles right now. I feel like that does more for me than doing a bunch of other stuff. Now, we put the most emphasis on the obvious main supplemental work. So I did three sets of the benching, close grip benching. But then we need those those dips. We need all the upper chest work. We need the shoulder work. And it hits the pecs and triceps from a variety of different angles. Each one adds and helps with the other. We create a good, well-rounded training effect. Because we're doing four different presses for the for the chest, shoulders, triceps, all that in each session. Okay, pretty good variation. And we know where so people want to argue about that well we actually know the research shows doing hitting a muscle from two or more angles in the same workout or the same amount of volume oftentimes produces slightly better growth there is no one exercise okay so i'm hitting a pretty significant amount of volume when you start adding up all the exercises when we keep, consider that these are all pretty much limit sets or very close to limit sets everything is in the effective rep zone okay this is not counting the maxes, it's eight total sets. Eight sets. And I don't have a chest and shoulder day. I have both two upper body days. So we're hitting it quite hard. And I'm at my, I had actually had to cut down to this because it was getting to be a bit much. Um, and then I've been for finishing just lately just so that I get the extra overhead work in. But just throwing 135 on and repping it to failure. Because again, I got to bring my strength back up on this. I ended up getting that 190. But we know, you guys have seen me do 225 and keep it there. You've seen me actually hit my best ever 227 and a half on a strict press. Now, we're going to get back to that. 
going to take some time. But I think the incline carries over to it a lot. And me just coming in and at the end doing a limit set on it will actually increase off of the muscle memory. Will get help get me back up there. But I feel like the incline work will actually increase it a lot. A lot of my guys will focus on incline and they come in and hit a PR on the press without really do having done much of it all the time. My, my own clients. Okay, we know it works. But I'm getting both in. I'm trying to finish off and make sure that I fully fully hit the muscle fibers involved with the press. But then I'm going to do all my shoulder work on this day now. So I'm going to do my hang pulls and everything on this day so that I can focus entirely on my lower body. Because yes, I am a little more bench specialized right now because it has the most room for growth, but I, I need to make sure that my lower body is appropriate because two of the competition lifts are lower body dominant. Got to keep everything flowing there. Like I, I'm worried my deadlift is not going to hit my goal if I don't really focus on the deadlift muscles. And we're getting some of that on this day because all the back, but my glutes, erectors, all that, they really need the extra work. They really do get my deadlift and everything up uh, squat is on on target like I think the squat of all things is just going to truck along now and that'll increase my deadlift but I want to keep the upper body of these two days we get in train it all really hard with with an, an appropriate volume loading um, that's why I get on the chins I didn't increase these try to increase them today this is about as heavy as I can handle. And I'm trying to just see if I can get a good range of motion at the bottom without hitting that point where my shoulder got impinged. I'm trying to stop just a hair short while moving as much weight as we can. And uh, I feel like I'm getting a good stimulus. And again, the cheek curls are going up and the, the pull-ups have gone up, the chin-ups have gone up, but I want to get those stronger. Like the next goal would be to, can we get to 100 pounds for triples? And then I did my hang pulls. The first set was a little sloppy, not as good as the next two. But I did my three by three. I increased it because I, I did these last time. 275, went up to 285. Like I said, the first set, meh, a little sloppy, but I needed to get into my groove. I think what people need to think about with a lot of my training, I don't really warm up. So sometimes all I did was like one rep with a plate on each side that loaded the bar up. Just to kind of test the waters, then we get everything rolling. And I tend to train like that. Especially once I've maxed out. So, then they went a little better. I felt everything definitely hammer my shoulders, and that's what we want. We need to drive through. We get that power. It's an exercise that is very simple to perform. doesn't require any skill, but still has explosive training and works the entire shoulder structure. And I need the extra shoulder work and the upper back work. And this is definitely an exercise that falls into that category. And I can mess with some other different variations of these things of different snatch grip high pulls and different high pulls and hang pulls and, and eventually you know in the long term I might want to mess with some clean and push press and stuff once my press gets up once I get good at some of that stuff maybe start cleaning and stuff later if I need to just for the overall shoulder um, I might mess with some of that later because that's always fun then we did our cheat curls uh, and again got six six and then seven with this weight I might need to increase the weight slightly coming up here soon and again, I'm getting a little better at just doing cheat curls. And for those curious, yes, they do what I want them to do. We've discussed before why we do cheat curls, why they do train the bicep. There's plenty of research on it showing that they do hit the bicep just as hard as, as you know, 20 pounds lighter on a stricter curl. Okay. And no, slow eccentrics do not give you more eccentric effect for hypertrophy. It's performing an eccentric at all. And people say, well, you're not. Well, I am. You don't know what an eccentric rep is based upon the different literature and coaching. I am not letting the bar drop to the floor. I'm not turning loose at the top and letting it just hit the ground. We're catching it. Bicep is getting micro tears, serious micro tears from that. But the thing is, it also works the upper back. Well, think about the cumulative effect of that. That's going to make us better at chin ups. It's going to make us better at chin ups and rows and everything else. Because we're creating a big compound multi-joint movement that uses the upper back while hammering our biceps. And that's the idea. My biceps are bigger now, objectively, than they were in the past when I did tons and tons of high rep strict curls, which don't have never really done anything for my arms historically. Nothing. Nothing. Maybe that's just me. N equals one. But good workout, happy with the session today. Um, you know, 
good lifts, good maxes, uh, good training. A little bit fatigued from it, but not buried, but definitely, definitely beat up because it is a lot of volume. But happy with today's session, so I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.